That being said, it's now time to uh, get up for the big keynote address coming in from the chairperson, who in fact is someone, as we always know, is always leading the charge from the front and setting new benchmarks for the retail industry, and is also standing tall as a torchbearer when it comes to leadership, especially amongst women. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a visionary who's led DLF's retail portfolio with her experience as well as her uh, innovative thinking. And I know she needs no introduction. We have with us none other than Pushpa Bekta, Executive Director, DLF Mall. So can we have a huge round of applause? Please help me welcome our keynote speaker, Pushpa Bekta. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, an absolute delight to meet all of you, and I'm really delighted to see the full house. Uh, it's just an anvil that uh, retail is beginning its next new chapter. I see many familiar faces, and I see a few new, that it's, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you, Ashna. Thank you, Mapik, for making me the chairperson this year. One of the things, and it's uh, an interesting, interesting year, you know, we all say that uh, when I joined retail, uh, it was sometime in 2006. And 2008, when uh, we opened the first slew of malls, that's when Lehman Brothers crash happened. And we saw a certain pivotal change in retail at that point. We consolidated as an industry, and now we know when COVID happened, uh, there has been many, many questions that have been answered, and we're seeing another huge growth that retail is today looking at. I would really like to talk about the changing face of retail in India. We all saw that, uh, you know, when before COVID, there were a lot of naysayers who said, is online retailing going to take over brick and mortar? COVID actually proved to us that omni-channel retail is the only thing that matters. What really happened post-COVID is that consumers thronged right back to brick and mortar without really compromising on their online requirements, where they go online where they want to, but they know where they want to be offline. And each one of you in the retail fraternity as well as my developer fraternity have seen uh, very clear indicators of how strong retail is going to be. So what's this changing face of retail that we are really talking about? Well, one thing that is changing is the consumer mindset. The consumer mindset today is, uh, you know, many of them still look at pricing. Pricing is a huge element for people to look at, but when we are looking at an overall picture in the country today, what we are really seeing is COVID actually looked at people and we said, is the product available? Uh, when we reopened doors, one of the biggest challenges that we all faced is people were running out of stocks and they had to get their logistics in order. So two, three industries have really come up and got more mature in one is the logistics space, which is very important for both brick and mortar as well as online to get very resilient. Uh, the second that are looking at test. Yeah. So we are all looking at uh, consumer behavior, and thank you. we are seeing that the consumer behavior is changing. Today, when we are looking at the consumers, we are not talking merely about footfalls. What's happened in 23 and going forward is really spend per footfall. It's a metric that we were all uh, looking at, but not acutely analyzing. But today, the spend for each of the people who are walking into our properties or going online, the depth of the spend has increased. So what's really changed? What's changed is domestic consumption that we see. Uh, we used to look at domestic consumption as uh, a static phenomena has actually become a space where it is triggering to the next level. 
Today, when international brands come in and meet us, it's very clear that they are looking at India with new eyes. The reason is that uh, we, as a, as a country, have been a very resilient economy. Today, when the world is looking at India, they see India as a strong, domestically mature, resilient economy, which, frankly, earlier used to be the mantle of our neighbor, China. Today, that mantle has come to India. To us, I think that's the real opportunity. When international brands look at India, when international businesses look at India, differently today, the mindset has changed due to the very resilient way the consumers have researched back into our country, in our country. The other element that has really been changing is, uh, before we go on to trends, is today, uh, the GDP that India is really getting strong with, 10% of the GDP is the, in the contribution of the retail industry. Now, that's a phenomenally new number. We never thought it would happen so quickly. And mind you, uh, just like the United States, now 8% of employment generation is due to retail, be it online retail, offline retail, or brick and mortar retail. Now, all this data is going to actually propel the industry into a serious space where people take notice of the numbers. We, by 2030, will definitely be the fifth largest retail consumption in the world. And we are standing at an anvil when Apple has just opened doors here. And it's very clear that uh, the reason that they see India to be very strong is because they know that the, they have seen the kind of behavior pattern change, and they know that premium products like Apple are going to really grow in the country. And it's just the start. So what are the different trends that shape India's consumer journey? Today, uh, the consumer is really looking at experiences, like the theme of the event. Uh, it's no longer a commodity of, hey, I want to go and shop. It's about experiences. In a way, if you see the consumer durables, people have, they've all bought, we've all bought consumer durables. We are looking for that chunk of money to go towards experiences, be it in travel. And I do think travel experiences is a huge economy that is growing. And along with the travel economy is the retail economy. Travel economy and retail economy actually go hand in hand. Seeing this opportunity, we at DLF have actually, we are establishing a mall in Goa. Goa is clearly not just the new Vegas, Goa is the new, uh, if I can say, it's a cusp between Miami and Vegas, that's really where we are seeing Goa to be, and it's just growing. The domestic consumption of Goa is growing. Uh, I see our architects sitting right there. Uh, Goa is one space which is a very exciting market, and hence we thought we should be there. Uh, and travel experiences is just, as I said, starting. The second part that I'd like to talk about is loyalty. Loyalty today is no longer about just points. Loyalty is, do I belong to the community? So we, again, in DLF, how we go about it is we create communities in each of our properties. So at CyberHub, for example, we keep hosting marathons. We have, and there are many runner groups. There are many other elements which deal with community, and one of the big communities that's growing today is the awareness towards art. And art as a community is again something, uh, uh, one which will tally very well with retail, because the very same people who are interested in art are also interested in high-end retail. Of course, the trend that I think we all in retail should learn from our online friends is their dependence on data. We really have started looking at data analytics far more seriously in our company, and uh, we do think that the next wave and ability to uh, see the trend is to do with data analytics. In store, what is it that we see that is working differently? It's something that I'd like to talk to my retail friends during the next session, but consumers today, really are valuing their privacy. Uh, 
And when uh, you know, our phones ask, do we want to allow to be tracked, it's the same sensitivity that we should exhibit even when consumers come into our properties. So that ability to track consumer sensitivity will also mark and differentiate our properties. And last but not the least is that people have the money, but we have to have the ability to give them the choices. So when, uh, be it a restaurant, be it uh, you know, any of the stores, be it a mall, it's about variety. People want varied experiences over their weekend, varied experiences of their menus or of their merchandise. They are looking constantly to be uh, a post for their self-expression. As you know, we are living in an Instagram generation and whatever is the next one that will come around the corner. But what we are really looking at is a generation which is all about self-expression. So if we are able to create those spaces which become the hub for self-expression, then I think we would have beaten the trend. So how is it all translating in economics? Well, the demand has actually rebound. We have around 25 million square feet of shopping malls, which is likely to be added in the next four to five years, which is a phenomenal number. Uh, the share of organized retail has gone up to a very, very healthy 18% from just around eight, 9% a while back. And both the national capital region of Delhi and the metropolitan region of Mumbai have seen huge cap in terms of uh, you know, real estate space. We're developing almost 51 million square feet of stock in varied form, which is really going to uh, make sure that the consumption in the two largest pockets grow. But last but not the least is that the tier two cities, the growth in the tier two cities are the ones which actually make for very good reading. By tier two, I mean Goa, Indore, Lucknow, et cetera, et cetera. And many of the developers have gone there and seen great results. This story is just about beginning. Uh, we do believe that the consumption, uh, when we see Delhi and Mumbai, they take over 40% of the consumption of the country, but the base is increasing. And the base is increasing through a funnel of online, moving on to offline. So what are we seeing? We're seeing changes in retail, certainly changes in retail behavior, changes in entertainment behavior. Today, when I talk to my cinema friends, they are very clear that 30% of the business has gone away to the OTT platform forever. Now, what do we do with the cinema business to make it even more vibrant is something that I'm sure we are all thinking about uh, because we cannot, the cinema operators also know that uh, occupancy has to come back to at least a 30%, healthy 30% for that industry to be vibrant. But um, there are opportunities there that I see uh, which will come in the form of, um, you know, there's so much opportunities in live entertainment that needs to be tapped into. People want to be entertained be it passive, be it live, people want to be entertained. It's all about the platform that we give them in our properties. The thing that also works very, very well is uh, health. Today, consumers are seeking choices because of the kind of uh, product health that it generates, what are the promises that it gives. People are very conscious of what they buy and what they consume. We, and its health is not just about the medicines that one has, it's about one's lifestyle, it's something that everyone's understood. So how are we uh, catering to that changing consumer trend is something for us to see. The one thing that I'd like to talk about is also um, we have in DLF a huge offices business. In the offices business, we saw during COVID that uh, many of them just vacated the spaces. We had to look around and see what is it that we can do to bring them right back. And we created some very, very well curated, thought through office amenity space. Today, the office amenity space has ensured that people have come back into offices at their, as their third spot. So, which is why we are dwelling upon work. 
Work and education and office amenities are going to be hand in hand. Uh, we think that that's another retail and F&B opportunity that's going to grow. We, uh, just to give an example, in Chennai and at Cyber Park, the retail and uh, F&B opportunities that we created is truly doing well. And again, there is an entertainment element to it. So what um, the office goer, the young person wants is that, hey, I don't want to go back to my room. I want a third spot to enjoy that amenity. And the more we give those amenities to them at their doorstep, it's going to do better and better. So that's another retail opportunity or F&B opportunity to look at. The retail business model is evolving. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot more about it with our uh, retail partners soon. Uh, there are many platforms that are forming. How is retail uh, really gearing up to that would be interesting to see. The purpose, of course, is consumers have always looked at brands from a trend point of view. We have done a tons of research, and the one thing that's coming through post-COVID is the new millennial spenders, Gen Z and Gen X, are looking at brands that they can trust. By trust, I mean, what's the source? How are these brands really procuring their products? Um, is it friendly? Is it sustainable? Are uh, brands looking at environment consciously? These elements are no longer boardroom talk. It's very much oriented to commerce, and people are going to be making their choices based on brands who are in the forefront of sustainability, who are in the forefront of uh, really looking at uh, creating an earth which is friendlier. And uh, the Gen Z certainly are uh, going to be making their purchase choices based on this. And hence, uh, some of the brands over here, uh, and I would love to know a little bit more about it from Body Shop, how are they looking at this? Because they always saw this trend as they went ahead. So catering to consumer needs today is not only about retail therapy, but it's all about the experiences that we offer. It could be a beauty brand, but that beauty brand can offer an experience which is unparalleled to make that woman's afternoon very um, you know, unique. So it's all about creation of communities. It's all about creation of experiences, and it's you know, an ability to think beyond the obvious. That's going to make sure that retail not only thrives, but really the opportunity that we've got now, we can become the third largest economy in the world with retail becoming the main driving force. With that, I'd like to say that uh, the deal of promise in all this is always consumer being at the heart of every experience and everything that we do. So we look at consumers very keenly to understand how their needs are changing and evolving, and we hope to be ahead of that curve as the time goes. Thank you.